Hello, my name is Nakaya Rimmer, and welcome to this video. It's a series of videos where we introduce Stokes's theorem. So, what is Stokes's theorem? Let's lay out the elements of it first. We start off with the surface S. We need that surface to be piecewise smooth, and we need it to be orientable. Next up, we have the curve C. This curve represents basically the boundary of the surface S. Okay, so the S surface isn't closed, it doesn't contain its boundary. The curve C is the boundary of the surface. That curve C needs to be piecewise and smooth and simple, doesn't cross over itself like a figure eight. Uh, it needs to be closed. Okay. It's the boundary of S. We need that curve to be oriented counterclockwise. That's called positively oriented. Um, and so uh, if that's the case, then one more element we need. We need our surface to have a normal vector. That is a unit vector. Okay, because that's what defines the orientation of our surface S. The normal vector to the surface dictates to you the orientation on the boundary. If your normal vectors point outward, your orientation on the boundary is counterclockwise, the right hand rule. Okay, if your normal vectors point downward, then the orientation on the boundary is clockwise. All right, great. All of this included um, in the fact that we have a vector field F. Uh, that vector field has three components to it, and we need those three components to be, you know, differentiable. Their derivatives, their partial derivatives, need to exist and be continuous. And and um, if that's all true, then here is what we can say. We can say that the outward flux of the curl. The curl of F dotted with that normal vector um, ds, that is a surface integral there that's integrated over the surface. The outward flux of the curl can be found by the line integral around the boundary. Our three-dimensional line integral can be used to help us find the surface integral. And most times we're going to go in the direction of running away from the surface integral. We'll see that it's uh, quite a cumbersome uh, task to calculate a surface integral. And so this is Stokes' theorem. And now let's take a look at it being used. So if somebody asks you to use Stokes' theorem to evaluate this surface integral, the outward flux of the curl, then using Stokes' theorem is not actually executing that integral. Using Stokes' theorem is, is executing the line integral. You've been asked to evaluate this flux of the curl. You use Stokes' theorem to find the line integral, line integral around the boundary. Or perhaps the statement will say, use Stokes' theorem to evaluate the line integral. Or maybe it won't even say use Stokes' theorem, but maybe the line integral is too involved to actually calculate. And instead, we can find any surface that has that curve C as its boundary, and we can go calculate the actual outward flux of the curl. Okay, so somebody asks you to evaluate a line integral using Stokes' theorem is evaluating the surface integral instead. Most times the surface integral is difficult unless you have something nice like a, um, a plane. And so we're gonna see both of these in action. Um, we'll see one of these in this video and then I'll put the other one in another video. We don't want the video to run too long. So let's see the, uh, the, the first option in action. You are asked to calculate the outward flux of the curl of this vector field F. And your surface is the part of the paraboloid. Paraboloid's a bowl. The part of the paraboloid, this, this paraboloid opens upward, Z equals X squared plus Y squared. We only want the part that lies inside of the unit cylinder. X squared plus Y squared equals one. Z is allowed to be anything you want it to be. That, that paraboloid eventually outgrows that cylinder and continues on upward. We only want the part of the paraboloid that is inside of the cylinder. So here's a picture for you. 
Okay, we start down at the origin for the vertex of the paraboloid, and then it grows out until it reaches the, the x squared plus y squared equals one cylinder, and we stop there. Our surface is the paraboloid, it's not closed. The boundary of the surface is the rim of the, the bowl-like shape. And so if we're going to actually execute Stokes's theorem, we're not gonna calculate the curl of f dot n ds over that surface. No, instead, we're going to find the line integral around the boundary. The work done by the vector field to move a particle around the boundary is exactly the same value as the outward flux of the curl over the entire surface. That's the beauty of Stokes theorem. Okay, so how do you execute a line integral? Just, there's some definite steps that you need. Okay, you're gonna need to parameterize the curve. Let's start there. The curve is the unit circle, but not on the xy plane. It's been lifted up one unit. When x squared plus y squared equals one, then z is one. That's the, uh, the, uh, the plane that's parallel to the xy plane. And so we're gonna parameterize our curve by treating the x squared plus y squared like it's polar. And then when it comes to z, we're just gonna let it equal one. Uh, the radius is one, so we're gonna let x equal cosine t and y equals sine t. Normally we say like x equals r cosine t, and, but r is one, r is a constant on that curve. So x is cosine t, y is sine t, and z is one. t goes from zero to two pi to give, give us our counterclockwise orientation. Um, they say that the, uh, the surface is oriented upward, so that's gonna give us our, our counterclockwise orientation using a right-hand rule. And so we have our parameterization. Step one is to get the parameterization, and then you build a vector out of it called R, and then you take the derivative of that vector. That's called dr. So negative sine t and positive cosine t and zero, with officially with a dt on it, that's dr. We're gonna dot f with dr. Not the original f with the x, y, z's in there. We must rip those x, y, z's out and put in the replacements from the curve. We're looking for f where it's restricted just to be on c. Every x should be replaced by a cosine t. Every y should be replaced by a sine t. Every z should be replaced by a one. And so instead of y squared z, we'll have sine squared t. Instead of x, z, we just have cosine t. And then instead of x squared, y squared, we'll have cosine squared, sine squared. But we didn't really even care about what was in that last component of f in our dot product between f and dr. dr has a zero in that k component. We didn't have to calculate what was in the k component of f because it's going to be dotted with zero. But we did it anyway. So now let's dot. In f dot dr, we have the the i component of f is sine squared and it's multiplied by negative sine, so that's negative sine cubed. In the j component of f, we have cosine t, and that's the same thing that's in the j component of dr. So we get cosine squared t. That's what we integrate from zero to two pi. Do this calc one integral and you're done. Well, it's not actually easy. It's more like a calc two integral integrating powers of trig functions, but there's some things that can help you out. Um, the, the function uh, sine cubed has its period equal to two pi. We are integrating a full period of sine cubed. It's gonna, um, it's gonna zero out. You can actually integrate it and see it. Um, the function cosine squared is even. We could actually, um, uh, there's an identity that we need for that. It's a uh, half angle identity that cosine squared t is one half, one plus the cosine of double t. And then we have something we can integrate, but cosine of two t actually um, does two full periods by the time you get from zero to two pi. And so that's gonna zero out as well. You could actually integrate it. I just want you to know these things so you could um, take advantage of them whenever they come up. And so you're just integrating one, uh, well, one half, if you want to say that, from zero to two pi. The result of this integral is pi. Okay. All right, we'll come back with another example. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. 
I'll be happy to help you through this journey. Um, take care. See you in the next video.